Good morning. It's Tuesday, January 26, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of hope for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Enough, and our scripture is Genesis chapter 45. And they left Egypt and returned to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. Joseph is still alive, they told him, and he's governor of all the land of Egypt. Jacob was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe it. But when they repeated to Jacob everything Joseph had told them, and when he saw the wagons Joseph had sent to carry him, their father's spirits revived. Then Jacob exclaimed, It must be true. My son Joseph is alive. I must go and see him before I die. So Jacob set out for Egypt with all his possessions. And when he came to Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. During the night, God spoke to him in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he called. Here I am, Jacob replied. I'm God, the God of your father, the voice said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make your family into a great nation. I will go with you down to Egypt, and I will bring you back again. You will die in Egypt, but Joseph will be with you to close your eyes. If you do a pulse check on most any of the days of Jacob's life, you'll find a calculating, selfish wheeler dealer. Stuff like that always comes back to haunt you. Jacob didn't escape that. After his ambitious conniving to steal his brother's birthright and his father's blessing, Jacob had to leave town in the middle of the night to avoid everyone's anger. It cost him 20 years estrangement in the school of hard knocks. He lived with his uncle Laban, a much sharper knife in the drawer when it came to manipulation. The Ph.D. degree Jacob earned in this time spent with Laban was the futility of a lack of integrity. Another inescapable casualty of Jacob's manipulative lifestyle was how his children learned at their daddy's knee how to live that way too. The older sons were jealous of their father's attention to the youngest, Joseph, and eventually hatched a plan to throw him in a pit and watch him die. They eventually settled for selling him into slavery to a band of nomadic traders. With Joseph out of sight, they led Jacob to believe he'd been eaten by wild animals. For the next 20 years, the old man lived in paralyzing grief, mourning for Joseph, the son of his old age. Finally, a famine gripped Canaan, and Jacob sent his brother-killing sons to seek food down in Egypt. The sons wound up right in front of Joseph, their supposedly long-dead little brother who had managed to survive and thrive. He was the second most powerful man in the world under Egypt's pharaoh. Now, the whole point of this epic story of family fail came next as Joseph is reunited with his murderous brothers, forgives them, and sends them home to Jacob. Once Jacob gets over the shock of Joseph still being alive, he knows he must see this long-lost son face to face before he dies. As he's traveling to Egypt, God spoke to Jacob in a vision, assuring him that all will be well, and the promises of God would be carried out, and his son would be there to tenderly close the old man's eyes in his final moments of life on this planet. And for Jacob... A man once steeped in trickery, thievery, deceit, and conspiracy, which had all predictably turned into a massive pile of internal strife and sorrow, now humbled by the effect of God's mercy extended to such a one as Jacob, the manipulator, imposter, despicable excuse for a human being, one word from God was enough for you today. No matter how much you may have made a mess of your opportunities in this life or destroyed trust with family, friends, or even your own integrity, the promise of God is mercy to those who repent, humbling themselves before God to seek his face. Jacob did all that in a wrestling match with God one night near the Jabbok River. He meant to get right with God, and in mercy God forgave Jacob and gave him a new name. Israel, the special chosen friend of God. Now, Jacob's story isn't about airing the family's dirty laundry. 
His story is all about letting you know this God you've been hunting forgives. And he's only waiting for you to come calling. And when you do, you'll see, like Jacob, it will be enough. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.